All right, guys, in today's video, we're looking at this HP Gen 8 micro server, and we've got this flashing amber health light down here. This is typically a drive problem, so I'm going to take you through today swapping out array drive and rebuilding the array. But first, let's confirm that this is what the problem is. If we get rid of this light with the glare and we come over to the screen here, there's a couple of ways you can tell what the problem is. I'm logged into this server's running Windows and I'm logged into the system management homepage. And we can see here that it's giving us a warning about the Dynamic Smart Array B120 controller. And if we take a look at that particular controller error message, it's telling us that we've got a problem on Bay 2 with this drive. And it's telling us that the status has failed. So that's the first way you can tell is this problem coming from a particular drive and where it is. Uh, something else you can do is you can log in to the integrated lights out management system. And you can go into system information, physical view. Here we're looking at ILO 4 running on this particular server. This is uh, ILO version, I think, 2.82. And if we scroll down, we can see again that the physical drive in Bay 2 has failed. We can find out the model number, and we can see this is a Seagate ST3000VN000, which is a 3 gigabyte, excuse me, 3 terabyte uh, drive, 3,000 gigabyte drive. So we know what we need to replace, and we know what we have. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shut the operating system down. So I'm going to go back over here in Microsoft Remote Desktop. We're going to come over and we're going to just do a shutdown of the operating system. And if we come over and look at the server's lights while this is going on, we'll put some more light back on the server here. So she's still shutting down but she's not going to power off, right? And so in order to do this kind of a test, what we're going to want to do is completely power off. So in order to do a complete power off, we need to go into ILO. So we're going to come back to ILO, power management, server power, And what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to do a graceful power off. Now if we come back over to the device, we've powered her off. So now it's safe to disconnect the power and pull the drive. But before we do that, I'm going to show you something else, but let's take a look at where the drive's located. So if we open up the access door here, we can see the drives and there's a lot of dust here. We're going to want to clean that. But if we come in here, I think these are numbered right through this dust here. We can see there are the numbers of the bays. One, two, three, and four. So this guy here, the second one is bay two. This is the one we're going to end up wanting to pull. You won't need any tools. The little screwdriver that you'll need is already sitting right here. So I'm going to get a vacuum and vacuum all this dust out. And then I'm going to do two more things. I'm going to hook up a mouse and keyboard to these two USB ports right here on the front. And I'm going to hook up a small monitor to the VGA port in the back because before, before we pull the drive, we want to make sure that we can access the array configuration utility in the BIOS in case anything goes wrong. So let me hook up these pieces and then I'll show you the ACU or the array configuration utility. All right, so this is just a page printed out of the Microserver Gen 8 user guide. This talks about the array configuration utility. And the only thing I'm pointing out to you here is how to access it. So they say here that the ACU is now available as an embedded utility, starting with the Gen 8 servers. And you can either use F10 if, you have an op if an optional controller is not installed, or if it is, you can press F5 during post. So we've got our small little monitor hooked up. We've gone ahead and vacuumed out all this dust. It's a good idea to vacuum out around the drive while you're at it. 
and now we can power this guy back up just to test that this is working and we can go ahead and watch our display and once she gets going we'll wait for when we can hit the F5 key at some point we will see it pop up that it's initializing the array controller okay now we're coming into the smart array and now we can hit F5 once this guy initializes it should recognize hitting F5 on the keyboard okay so it's sitting here saying that it wants to rebuild these drives I don't even know if we need to bother to go in at this point so I think what we will do is continue without doing recovery because we haven't swapped out the drive yet and now we're gonna run F5 it's booting into ILO so that it can run the ACU it's booting up the ACU at this point here we go so we're just want, we just want to make sure all of this is working okay in case anything goes wrong with the array rebuild if anything does go wrong we need we need to be able to get in here it's a very slow process all right we got a mouse cursor and it is responding okay so we were able to get into the ACU here that's all we wanted to do we just wanted to make sure that we could get in here the RAID controller is right here you can see this on the left hand margin where we have the B120 on this particular setup and we can see we even have the status about the um, the problem then it's it's ready to do a rebuild we can see here that both drives are queued up to do a rebuild so at this point we want to get out and I think we are done I was looking to see if there was an exit button but I guess it's just a close and now we're gonna go ahead and click this guy to do a shutdown now she shut down and now we can safely do what we needed to do so now we're gonna take again the bays are listed down here on the bottom one two three four we're going to lift up on bay two and pull bay pull the drive out on bay two and we know this is a bad one so we're gonna mark it and we're gonna confirm our number and then we're going to go ahead and grab this little tool here that we see sitting on the front panel and we're going to use that to take these screws off you can of course use a regular screwdriver if you like but they provide this so why not last one okay take this little carrier out sit it right here take our new drive now this is a more modern version this is an ST 3000 VN 006 our original one was a 000 the new one is a little bit smaller in height but otherwise is the same 
We're going to set this one in the carrier. And then put those screws back in. Small little screws. Okay, this side is nice and snug. Do the other side. Snug these two up. And now we're ready to reinstall the drive. These drives are not hot pluggable on this model. That's why we did what we did by shutting everything down. Now we're going to slide it back in and lock it back in. Put our little tool back in here and power it back up. Now we're going to go back to the monitor again. And this time when she powers up, we can let her initiate the rebuild of the array, knowing that if anything goes wrong, we have a way to get into the array configuration utility and take corrective action. Okay, we're going to hit F1 to recover the drive data. But we're not going to go into the administrative utility, so we're going to hit Escape this time and go ahead and proceed into Windows. And you see once we're still blue on the bottom here on our health. And we're booting up in this is an old version of Windows, like Windows 2008 R2 server based OS. Just want to make sure everything boots up okay. We're basically done. And once this boots up okay, I will log back in to ILO and the system management page from my laptop like we saw at the beginning of the video and we'll check on the status of this array and this new drive. Okay, mouse driver is all loaded up. Alright, so Windows is booted. Let me give you take a moment to get logged back in on my laptop and we'll switch to the laptop screen. All right, uh, got our keyboard mouse unplugged and our health lights start flashing yellow again, and that's good. That means it's doing the rebuilding. If we switch over here, I'm going to show you the ILO view first. Get this light off for the glare. So if we come in here and look at the physical view, now we can see all drives and all bays and ILO are showing OK. And we can see our new Bay 2 N006 drive, where all the others are still the first generation. And if we take a look at our logical view, it'll tell us that logical drive 1 is in the process of rebuilding, and logical drive 2 is queued and ready for rebuild. So this is goodness, but we still don't know what's going on, how far in is it. So let's go over here and see if we can get some more information from uh, RDUing into the actual system management homepage on the drive. We'll go into the smart controller. Here again, we see green checks in all of our physical drives. And if we take a look at logical drive one, there we go. Here's the percent of our rebuild, so 13%. So we're going to need to have this guy go all the way over before logical drive two starts, is my guess. This guy is ready for rebuild, but it's going to do one at a time. So we'll go ahead, and uh, I'm not going to film all this. Obviously, I have no idea how long this takes. It's probably going to be an hour or so, maybe even more. We'll come back and check on this when it gets near the end and see if it flips over to Logical Drive 2 the way we think it should. Well, guys, this went pretty quick. Um, maybe 25, 20 minutes went by, and number one is already green again, as you can see over here on the side. It finished on us, and if I go into Logical 2, it's just now starting the rebuild there. So it looks like uh, three terabytes runs about 20 25 minutes to rebuild the logical drive we'll see if that's the case with the last one that's remaining here we'll keep an eye on it and come back in a few minutes all right guys we're checking in about the one hour mark i realized in that previous clip i misspoke that uh 
first logical drive was only 159, 160 gigabytes. That's why it only took a little over 20 minutes. Second thing I want to point out here is like an hour in since that, if you click on this again, you see this guy doesn't automatically refresh. So you have to kind of periodically go in and out to get the latest. But here an hour later, we're 35% in rebuilding Logical Drive 2 to complete the array rebuild. So at that rate, it's probably going to take another couple of hours to finish the whole thing. We'll check back in on a little while. All right, another two hours in, and we're sitting at 65%. So at this point, we're a total of over three hours into this process. So we'll check back on it again in another hour. All right, we're more than seven and a half hours into this, and we're almost done at 97% rebuilding the array. So next update should be the final 100%. All right, guys, she's all done. I kind of missed it. It uh, took over 45 minutes to get those last few percents, but we can see now we're all green across the board. The array is all rebuilt, and right when that finished, our health light went back to being blue. So I hope this helps you out on how to replace a failed RAID drive in your HP Gen 8 microserver and get everything going again. My best recommendation is keep the same size drive as the one that failed and everything will go nice and smooth the way it did here. If you've got questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to help. If you found this video useful and help get your Gen 8 back and go going and running again, appreciate you paying it forward by hitting that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.